Hi there, iOS developers. Interested in adding the Firebase platform to your app? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's get started with Firebase on iOS in this episode of Firecast. So there are two main parts to getting the Firebase platform up and running. Adding your app to the Firebase console and installing the SDK. Let's go over these one at a time. To add our app to the Firebase console, we first need to visit the console over at the URL here. Depending on when you're watching the video, the UI might look slightly different, but the general concepts should remain the same. Now, when you first visit the Firebase console, you'll see a few options here as to what you can do. Depending on your situation, you might see a list of existing projects that are already using Firebase. You'll see this first box has a couple options, adding a project and exploring a demo project. The demo project takes you to a read-only version of the Firebase console for Floodit, an actual mobile game that's out in the real world. I think it's a really good way to get to know Google Analytics for Firebase and see what kind of reporting you can get from an actual app with real data. To start a new project, as you might have guessed, I'll be selecting Add Project. But before we go further, let me take a moment to explain the difference between projects and apps. A project consists of one or more apps. All apps in the same project use the same Cloud Firestore and Cloud Storage for Firebase backends. And you can view combined analytics data across all apps in the same project. You can also use features like Firebase Cloud Messaging or in-app messaging to talk to all of them at once. You don't have to, but you can, which is sometimes convenient. So if you're a developer that has a cross-platform app, you want to put the iOS, Android, and or web versions of your app in the same project. That will give you some nice cross-platform benefits. Your user can access the same data if they switch back and forth between the iOS and Android versions of your app. Dynamic links will work across both platforms. You could send one notifications to all versions of your app, and so on. On the other hand, Completely different apps, you should put those in different projects. There's nothing gained by cramming them into the same project except tears and heartache. So if you're working on a cross-platform app and your Android or web team has already created a Firebase project, you should probably select that project and then connect your iOS app, which you'll see me do in a minute. But if you're the first one to be adding Firebase capabilities to your app, you get to be the one to create the new project. So I'm going to create a new project here. I can give it a name. But notice I also have this drop-down arrow next to the name. This gives you the option to import an existing Google project. If you've either created a Google project by visiting the Google Cloud Console, or you've added the older version of Google Analytics or Google Sign-in through a setup screen that looks something like this, you probably want to choose this Import option. This will keep all of your old project's capabilities while adding in all of the new features and services of Firebase. I'm starting a shiny brand new project, so I'll type in a new name. I'll stick with the default location of the US, which makes sure that my revenue value shows up as dollars in my analytics reports and my Cloud Firestore data is stored in the United States. I also have a couple of boxes to check here. The first one says, I opt into the default settings for sharing analytics data with Google. It's up to you whether you check this box or not. The second box is the terms I need to accept to agree to share analytics data. If you've checked the first box, you'll need to check the second one as well. I click continue and watch the magic of my project being built. Once you've selected or created a project, you're going to want to connect a client app to it. You can see I have the choice of connecting an Android, iOS, or web app here. So I'm going to select the iOS button. Now I need to give it my app's bundle ID along with a nickname if I want. You're going to need to add the App Store ID eventually if you want features like dynamic links to work. But you can also leave this blank for now and change it later if you don't have one yet. When you click Continue, you'll see a download button where you can download a Google Services Info.plist file. Note that it needs to be named this exactly. So if you get a little like one after the name like I just did, you're going to need to do a little renaming in Finder. Next up, drag this file into your Xcode project like so. Okay, let me go back to the console and hit continue here. 
and it's telling us this would be a good time to install the Firebase CocoaPod. I'm assuming you know something about CocoaPods, but if you don't, I happen to have a nice little video for you to check out all about it. Link is in the description below. So I'm going to close my Xcode project. Next, I'll jump into my project directory here and do a little pod in it. We'll open up the file. I'm using Vim, but feel free to use whatever text editor you prefer. Now, I guess I could uncomment this line to specify my deployment target of iOS 9 or greater, although it should be noted that at the time of this writing, Firebase is supported as far back as iOS 8. Next up, let's add a pod to install our library. It's important to remember that to keep your app nice and thin, you should only install the CocoaPod features you need. In fact, there's no all-encompassing Firebase CocoaPod that installs everything for you. You're going to need to pod install each individual feature. You can find a full list of CocoaPods in our documentation. For starters, I'm just going to add the Firebase Core Pod, which includes everything you need to get the basics up and running, and also enables Google Analytics for Firebase. So we'll add pod Firebase Core here, and we're done. Let's quit out of Vim. Next up, I'll make sure my project is closed, run pod install, and then open up the generated workspace. Let's build it to make sure everything compiles OK, and we can move to the next step. OK, looks like the next step here is to add some initialization code. I recommend putting this in your app delegate did finish launching method. First things first, let's import Firebase. Note that this is usually the only thing I'll ever need to import, no matter what I've installed. We're doing some pretty nifty work behind the scenes to make sure this works properly. I know this sounds like the exact opposite of my only pod install what you need advice from two minutes ago, but trust me here, this makes development much easier. Next up, we'll add the line firebaseapp.configure to make sure Firebase gets set up properly. And that's actually all you need to do. This configure method will take a look at what libraries you have installed and initialize them, grabbing the appropriate constants from the Google services file you dragged in earlier. So we'll give it a quick run. And then back in the Firebase console, I'll go to my final step, where I can see here that my app has communicated with Firebase servers. Congratulations, you're now up and running with the Firebase platform. There's a lot of places you can go from here. You can add sign-in using Firebase Auth, get your app talking to Cloud Firestore, or start using Google Analytics for Firebase to see how your users are really interacting with your app. You can check out all the links in the description below to get started and have fun.